What's up, everybody? Darius Daniels here. I'm with my incredible wife, Shamika. I feel hey. like I've known you a long time. A long time. I met you, I was like 19 yeah, or so. But don't date us. I'm old. Right. We're my good. God. We're not old. I'm old. I think I feel old. Anyway, <laughs> listen, uh, speaking of age, yes. what you're about to watch is a segment of mm -hmm. a conversation. I had with some of the young adults that are part of the okay. Change Church family. Yeah. I still consider myself a young adult. They're younger adults. And um, it's going to be, mm -hmm. I think, a conversation that's necessary. I had okay. some courageous conversations with Good. them. Good. All right. Conversations that are necessary, but mm -hmm. I want to warn some people, they may find some of the content okay. a little surprising. Yes. And it may be off-putting for some people mm -hmm. because we have to discuss some things mm -hmm or we discuss some things mm -hmm. in this conversation that that generation right. is dealing with themselves yeah. or that they are dealing with in an attempt to share the gospel yes. with other people their age. Right. And so we That's deal good. with some really tough topics mm -hmm. like racism yeah. and atheism yeah. and a bunch of other isms. Okay. And I attempt to equip them mm -hmm. to be good evangelists That's great. for their generation. Right. And we debunk some myths mm -hmm. about racism and their presence as people of color in the Bible mm -hmm. and things of that particular nature. Right. We want to help strengthen their faith, mm -hmm. but also to help equip them yeah. to be better evangelists to their generation. You know, I think this is so good that you do this because there are many things that we don't talk about in church. Mm -hmm. And so this gives them an opportunity to know what to say, how to say it. And um, and you're just so great at articulating the right way to do things. Yeah. So I just want to thank you for doing that. My God. Come on, you a good person. High five. Yes. Listen, I need to buy you a purse or something. Come on, that was now. Good. Anyway, um, I did want to prepare mm -hmm. you for this. So if this yeah. is the kind of conversation you are interested in, I don't want right. you to be blindsided yeah. by it. But I do believe it's going to help a lot of people. Mm -hmm. These are questions and challenges right. that people in the Christian community, specifically mm -hmm. in the African-American section of the Christian community, right. these are questions they are dealing with. Mm -hmm. And we want them to understand that the Christian faith is a faith for all people. Right. We are a cult of many colors yeah. and God has taken all people and made eight people. Yeah, so one faith, That's one right. Lord, one baptism. Yeah. But we deal with some real tough questions yeah. and it's a really real conversation. Yeah. And so be stimulated, be encouraged, be challenged, but That's most right. of all, be blessed. be blessed. Enjoy. And this is, the, this is the thing though about Christianity. If a person only wants a faith that works for them, Christianity is not for you. Yeah. So that's the problem with eth uh, ethnic identity issues when it comes to religion. It's the religion only works for people like me. And what Christianity is about is about creating a space where God, again, can make a people out of all people. All right. And so that everyone can see yourself in God's story because you are. Like Moses, his wife, Zipporah was black, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like he, like his family, yeah. just like we're probably happening, you know, nowadays, his family got upset that he married a black woman. Yeah. So even when you think about this, Moses had kids of color, right? <laughs> just, you know, <laughs> so it's like you're in the story. Yeah. Have you read the story? Is your judgment an informed judgment? Yeah. But people make assumptions that tenure in church mm -hmm. is, is the same thing as knowledge about church. Right. I grew up in church. I'm through with it. You grew up at a preacher spitting at you every week. Right. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you grew up with somebody saying, yeah, this is, <laughs> this is unfiltered, right? <laughs> yeah, you grew up with somebody screwing. Mary had a little lamb. Yeah. Like you know, about to say, yeah, it's like you, you weren't. So that doesn't that doesn't mean you got your head wrapped around these issues. Religion is the only area. Religion, politics and sports are the only areas where people assume expertise with no education. Right. So I want to question about when we talk about justice, because like a lot of times what you see, especially in the climate we're in is like 
you hear, yeah, let's just pray about it because Jesus was peaceful and Jesus mm. was calm and Jesus was loving and Jesus was all inclusive. And, you know, so for me on my side, I'm like, no, Jesus was radical. Like he flipped tables and all, this. <laughs> you know, he's very <laughs> radical. Yeah, 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 he shocked the system. Like I believe if we had Jesus today, most people wouldn't like who he was. But can we even talk about like, how do we handle that? Because that's a lot of what you will hear is like, you know, y'all, if you're a Christian, you wouldn't be upset about this. You just need to yeah. just trust yeah. God. And it's, yeah. at what point do I, quote unquote, I guess, trust God? And at what point do I take action? You know, oh, that's such a good point. You know, I'm at a point, frankly, with you where um, I've had discussions. You know, I was in one place and that was this leader. He was articulating some things and I'm sitting listening. And there was a, there was a season where I would say, I think we view that differently. Mm. Now I'm saying, I'm wondering if we're the same kind of Christian. Mm. Because your views and your vantage point is not just different from mine. It is dangerous for my son. My African-American son, your viewpoint is dangerous for him. The, the policy that you're advocating for because you say that's Christian is something that puts my son in jeopardy. Both of us can't be right. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I, yeah I'm, I'm not saying yeah. Both of us can't be right. So I really think what happens is instead of us being made in the Jesus's image, what Christianity in the West has done is we made Jesus into ours. So I have a question as far as relevancy as well, right? So I think a lot of times um, people have noticed that the quote unquote, the church has compromised on certain things. And I think that has allowed things to come in that has deterred people from church. Um, so I question and I battle with daily, it's just like, how do I make the gospel, how do, I, how do I make Jesus relevant to today's time, today's society, make it uh, appealing to people, my peers, where they understand, they can see themselves, they understand they can walk this way, right? Um, mm. And so I, I think, like I said, if, if I was going to ask the question, you know, pointedly, it'd be like, what steps would you take or would you advise to take to make the gospel relevant without compromising the truth of it? Yeah, one of the things I think, and this is going to sound so simple, but I think it's, a, it, it's, it's important to understand that the culture you live in in terms of reaching people pales in comparison to the culture the early church had to live in to reach people. It was much more polytheistic. People didn't even know what Christianity was. At least now they have an idea to reject, you know? So my point is that this challenge, even, so that some of the, even though some of the specifics are new, this challenge is not new. And I'm gonna say this, it's gonna sound so simple, but you cannot transmit what you don't first of all embody. The credibility of a message in, is increased by those who actually embody it. And so if I'm like, yo, this is better, I got so much peace, if people don't see that on me, they're not interested in an informational argument. Mm -hmm. And so I think one of the ways we, we demonstrate the relevance is not just by the way that we present it. That's important, like drawing, being able, having conversations like this where you're able to at least give perspective on certain things I think is important. So the way you present it is important. The ability to answer some of the prevailing questions they have, that's important. But I'm telling you, just living into your walk in such a way where they see something in you that, that makes them curious the way Nicodemus was curious. He was educated, influential, and powerful. But he came to Jesus, he's like, man, God with you. <laughs> you know, it's like, like, so tell me more. Tell me more. And I think, um, especially people that we got relationship with, we got to let life ripen them a bit. And if you live it in front of them long enough, life will ripen them in a way where they will be, become open to some things that they were not open to previously. So patience is, um, is also important. So, which is really interesting uh, with the control thing too, but also he was saying, um, I met a person and they were like, something's different about you. Like, it's just something different. Mm -hmm. And so we were like talking and over the course of four hours, I told him about church and he was very interested in like my beliefs and just what church is like for me when mm -hmm. I experience it. And then afterwards, I just 
noticed he was very quiet. And I was just like, what are your responses to that? And he goes, I just think you're wonderful. I think this is, this is awesome. But I believe along the sense that like, I, we all are God. Like I am God. I have God in me. This is enough for me. And you are God and you, I can see the godliness in you. Mm -hmm. And I thought to me that that was like, I don't know, I, it didn't sound, it, was, it seemed somewhat dangerous to me because yeah. there's no foundational mm -hmm. belief to go mm -hmm. on. And I understand he was trying to take the more holistic approach mm -hmm. with, right. I just feel like, I, I don't know, just the holistic of like nature and things, yeah. but mm -hmm. what is your stance and how do you respond to that in a way? Yeah. Because you're speaking to the God that you see in me and I'm excited and I'm fired up to share myself and my beliefs with you, and then you get that type of response. Like, how so you... good. Some questions are automatically going to always bring you back to a few fundamental thoughts. So no matter how some of these things come up, there isn't always a unique answer for everything because it's still some very fundamental thoughts that um, that it that I think are important when it comes to addressing some of these issues. So for me, it comes down to a few questions. So in terms of practically the way that I would, would, would respond, I don't think you can impact people you insult. So I wouldn't insult that belief system. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't um, endorse it, but I wouldn't immediately insult it. I'd say, wow, that's, that's interesting that, that you feel that way. That's an interesting perspective. You know, I, I see that completely differently. For me, I think if you believe that, um, I guess that's okay for you, for me, that's a little dangerous for me. The for me is everything. Those two words are for everything. You know, that's dangerous, that's defense and walls go up. That's a little dangerous for me, and I'm gonna tell you why, because for me, when I look at the way everything is created, like so if I just look at creation, to me, intelligent design is logical. Mm -hmm. yeah that when you look at the way the earth is constructed, it takes way more faith to believe that a big bang happened. Right. Yes. And as a result of the big bang, we have this orderly universe. We have humans with a human brain that's more complex than any other computer. The way we're constructed, somebody knew what they were doing. They put skulls over brains. So for me, it's, real, it's, it's more ludicrous for me to believe that some big bang happened yeah. or that something that was not different from me was responsible for that. Wow. Yeah. Right? Because I know my frailties right. <laughs> and I know my limitations yeah. and um, I know my tendencies and I know that there is something other than me, distinct from me, mm -hmm. different from me that created this and that is responsible for the change I'm experiencing. Yeah. I hadn't had this, I hadn't had this kind of change my whole life. So if he, I've been with him and he's been in me this whole time, then why is it that I'm just now getting to this, this place? I've been open to it for some time. I've been wanting it for some time. Does it happen organically, automatically? And why is it that I can trace some of this evolution in my life to a time period in, with me being in the church, learning some things, applying those things, and seeing these results. Yeah, so, you know, no matter what, it kind of, it, it comes back to that kind of fundamental argument for you, for you. And so for me, I don't have to be him to feel that way about me. I don't have to be God to have high value of myself because I'm his. <laughs> That's enough for me. How do you feel about somebody who identifies with something that's not of God or like, like we're in an era where if I feel like I'm from Jupiter and you disagree, yes. you would <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My whole life, I believe I'm from Jupiter. Right. Period. Don't say nothing to me. How do you feel about that? Like, how do you feel about that? <laughs> that's so good. <laughs> it's, really strong. it's like, I'm trying to have a conversation. But you so mad. Man, that is so yeah. true. Yeah. That is so true. Yes. This is what I this is what I think is so important. And every believer's gotta realize this. You must understand 
It's your responsibility to try not to be offensive. Mm. You cannot control who's offended. Mm. That's the hardest thing for people yeah. that, that want to help people, you know what I mean? Is yeah. to realize your limitations, to realize, yeah, no matter how I say this, if I don't agree with you, yeah. you, you're fearless. Yeah. <laughs> you big, you big man. Are yeah. oh, you mad, man? Yeah. Yeah, I just said I'm not from Jupiter. Yeah. Like, like, you know, people yeah. won't only get upset if, if, <laughs> if, <laughs> they'll get upset if they think you say they not from Jupiter, but they'll get upset if you say, you know what, that's cool. I'm not from Jupiter. Yeah. Well, what you mean you're not from Jupiter? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, yo. I'm, yes. I'm not from Jupiter. Right. Yeah. So I think I, I think recognizing that is is so important. It really is. A, man, there are limitations, and I, I really can't control whether or not someone's offended. Yeah. I can just control whether or not I'm offensive, mm -hmm. and try to lovingly alter.